suspension of sales of the three-day dual boost and 10 win enhanced boost? What? What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel, man. I'm trying to get some sleep and they come out with this information. What is going on here? Uh, thank you for playing Pokemon Duel. We will stop sales of the three-day dual boost and 10-win enhanced boost, which are currently on sale as recommended items in the shop because these functions will change to a ticket-based system. Ticket-based system. Hmm. How are they going to implement this? Uh, items will stop selling. It lists the three-day boost and the 10-win. Uh, Future plans. From the 7th to the 10th of June, we are planning for all players to be able to play the game with a 3-day dual boost and 10-win enhanced boost having been activated once. What are they doing? They're giving like every player an opportunity to use the boost. This is going to help with monthlies. We hope you take advantage of this month of uh, this opportunity to earn monthly points. In addition, starting the 12th, we are planning to make the three-day dual boost ticket and a 10-win enhanced boost ticket available to you through events and log in bonuses. Now, what does this mean to you guys? Tell me what your thoughts are uh, below in the comments. Let me give you my thoughts and my opinions. Now, they say they're going to do it on the 7th or the 10th. To me... When you want to run the three-day boost or the 10-win boost, the best time to do it is during an event, primarily the team match event, because that's the only event that you're going to be playing in league. I mean, the Queen's Cup and the gym and the tournament, those are in separate uh, separate plays, play, uh, playlists. So I think what I'm going to guess is on the 7th through the 10th, we're going to have a team match event. Now they're also talking about on the 12th, they're going to, Planning to make the three-day dual boost ticket and 10-win enhanced boost ticket available through events and login bonuses. So login bonuses, I hope that they get you get like X amount of tickets. I don't know. If you log in for a seven-day streak, kind of like on Pokemon Go, you get like a streak, right? If you log in seven times, so for a full week, you get five tickets or ten tickets. And then for the events, I'm hoping like gym, if you get the 11-game win streak, you get... 15 tickets or the Queen's Cup. I'm really, really hoping for the Queen's Cup because the Queen's Cup is for, like everybody gets to play the, the Queen's Cup, right? It's 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 um, less stress in league and it just allows people to kind of chill out and cool down. So I'm really hoping there's a lot of tickets to be given on the team or not the team match, but the Queen's Cup. So team match event. I hope like, dude, this this is this is good. Like this is this is really good. Like I think Pokemon Duel is catering more and more and more to free to play. Like not, I wouldn't say catering more, but it's <laughs> it's making it more accessible for free to play players to access figures. So I'm loving that they're gonna do it on this ticket ticketing system. But we have to ask the question: like, where is this coming from? Why are they transitioning from paying to use these boosts to tickets? Something doesn't seem right. Like, what if? Their player base is... Oh, no, my music wasn't even on the entire time. I'm sorry. What if the player base is dwindling and they're trying to make it easier for players to come back and play? That's, I mean, that's one thought. But regardless, this is good. This is really good for the community. And I'm actually thinking because they're getting rid of the paying aspect of it that they're going to implement some sort of other uh, aspect of for, you know, pay-to-play players. But hopefully it's not nothing too crazy. So with this, I'm actually hoping we're getting some new events, some events that we haven't seen before because it does say through events and login bonuses. I mean, we do have three to four primary events, but I don't know. Tell me what your guys' thoughts are and opinions on this new ticketing system that we're going to be getting for this uh, the dual boost. I don't want to leave you guys hanging. We do have some matches to show. Um, this video was intended to come out tomorrow, but because of the news, we I decided to make it today. But, of course, we have some boosters open. We have two blue boosters and a purple booster. And today, you guys, is the last day that we'll be playing the uh, free-to-play-ish deck. Um, and I've been testing out this deck. You guys saw in the last video, but we did make some changes. We took out one um, Amara, put in the uh, rare Aerodactyl, and then we also took out our Blacephalon and brought in the Vibrava. I don't know. 
Mega Adeno. When you guys are going to get Mega Adeno, what do you guys think we're going to be getting for the next banner? Please let me know in the comments below what your guys' predictions are because it's not too far away. All right, purple booster. Dude, they need to fix the AI. That's what you guys really need to do. You guys see we're 3.3 in monthly, so we got we did some grinding through these couple days while we were streaming. But my boosts have just ran out. But all right. Again, let me know what your guys' thoughts and opinions are on this news, but let's jump into the first match. All right, guys, this first match. We're going to call this the Clutch Shadow Ball, okay? These next, these three matches that I do want to show you guys are pretty, like, clutch plays. I thought they were pretty entertaining. So take a look at my opponent. We were playing up against Wake Up, a.k.a. I believe it was Lation, because he did come into my stream and say GG after. Uh, but looks like they're rocking the long throw goal block, long barrel. Remember last video I was talking about not people running long barrel, but here we go, we got a long barrel. So I was pretty excited. Um, and they're rocking like a hybrid, like a half ice and then half meta-ish. Well, meta because meta, meta, and I think this is becoming the meta. <laughs> Unfortunately, this right here is not even level five, level four. All right, and this is the last match that I'm gonna be showing you with the free to play-ish deck. So we're gonna start off first. We're gonna rush the entry point with our um, Aerodactyl. I decided not to move up with the Mew like I typically normally do because I figured that Wake Up knows exactly what I'm going to be doing here. And I decided to rush here with the Mew, which was very questionable because this can KO my Mew. So I, after I made that play, I was like, dude, I don't even like the way I'm playing. This is a this is bad. Why would I move my Mew up like that? And he is rocking the long throw, I believe, right? Yeah, he is rocking the long throw. I mean, so you could have put anything right here on this Mew. Probably could even put on the Dawn Wings. But uh, I do see this. Anytime I see this or the Ty Tyrant or Tyrantrum, well, Tyrant. Uh, Dull Blade is always good. We're definitely going to power battle. So that's what we do. We power battle here, basically getting a free evolution off. And he hits the freeze dry, which is bad because my uh, Air Doctor has to spin. And fortunately, he does not spin a blue. Otherwise, he would have been um, frozen. But I think we would have been, been good. We would have been able to unfreeze him. So uh, Lacia makes a great play here, and I'm going to have to cover up, and then he can uh, surround my Mew, and that's exactly what he does with the long throw. So what we're going to do is we are going to change forms. We're going to go into blade form, and we're going to go straight after this Kirim, and I realize if we miss this play, we are going to get surrounded, but I figured the odds were in my favor. No, he does hit King Shield a lot, but we do get the roll, and GG boys to the Kirim. Now they're going to gold block, and now I see an opportunity here. I'm like, all right, I'm going to change forms. We're going to attack this Vulpix and hope that we get the Shadow Ball and we get the Shadow Ball. What? Shadow Ball. What? RNG is coming to my favorite. We're definitely going to make this. Dawn Wings spin. Can you please spin a purple for me? And he does. And Dawn Wings is now gone. So what I decided, I decided to do here, I decided to Mega and take the entry point. Like I could have used um, the Blade form and attacked here, but then his Z gauge would have been up. So I decided to go the safe route. Uh, do this and then threaten us around on the Rhyperior, but he does get a clutch bulldoze So now what we can do is now we can blade form now we can go after this Vulpix Pretty decent odds and we hit it the baby doll eyes into the shadow sneak and that is G G well actually Lation has one more shot. I mean we do have a decent size miss here So I mean I like cuz I probably would have forfeited there I, I wouldn't even have thought to attack her because I wouldn't have seen it um, but he does do his one last hoorah, trying to KO me, trying to take the entry or the goal. But we're still in a pretty good position. But now that is GG boy. So good games to Lation. I tell you this all the time. I need to finish Resident Evil when I have time. I, I Trust me, I plan to. But all right, let's jump into the second match. All right, this match we're going to call it Decisions Decision on a Frozen Mon Sky Drop comes in clutch that's way too long <laughs> all right take a look at my opponent um look at uh, when i saw this deck i was like pretty excited because you guys know how i feel about the cadabras you know how i feel about these cowards and their plates the twisted spoon but look at the deck that we're running we have the deck that annihilates abilities although something i learned today i don't like playing with a one mon down that's this deck has been very frustrating um, but I've also, what I've also learned is mega, evol mega Evolutions are a pain. Switches are a pain. Scoops Ups are a pain. Because when I get rid of their ability and they do either of those things, all that hard work is gone. So I'll take a look at my opponent. They have 
Oh wait, it wasn't this game. But he does have mega. Evo he does have evolution. So I mean, he has the Kadabra. If the Kadabra evolves, gone. Mega. Gone. So we're playing H Havo, Javo. Don't know what it is. But we're gonna start off with the Primal Sphere because there's nothing that can really rush me. Well, I guess he could technically. Uh, but he's gonna bring up the Abra. We're gonna counter here with the uh, Aerodactyl. And then we're gonna set up our little Shuppet wall. God, talking about Shuppet, man. I miss Shuppet. But he brings on the Kadabra. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And now what he does, he's gonna twist his spoon here. And I'm like, uh uh. You are not gonna twist that spoon. I'm gonna get rid of your psychic powers. And that twisted spoon is just gonna remain like a normal spoon. Won't twist. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna get rid of that ability. And then we're gonna move forward because something I also learned. I totally forgot that when you play the Necroizer, you can move on the same turn. And typically what I would do is I would just stay here, use the ability, and then I wouldn't move. But now what I'm starting to do is move forward, and I can either attack them if it's, you know, we have decent odds. But this time I moved over. That way I can take the entry point the following turn. So now I'm going to hop over. Threaten game here because we do have the burst, and now they're going too long throw here. So things are looking... I made a questionable play here. I know I could have got surrounded here, but I was being frustrated. I, like, I lost like two matches in a row, like long matches, and I was really frustrated. I was like, you know what? I don't even care. I'm just going to attack here, and hopefully we hit the roll. And we do. I probably would have punched him if I didn't do it. I don't know why I would have punched him, but I probably would have, but it was not even a smart play uh, in the least. But we get the roll. So now we're going to start moving up the um, uh, Emera because we want to get the evolution off. And I, he brings up the Kadabra. I know I missed this around here. I wasn't paying attention, but we're just going to attack here. We could have got rid of the Celebi. Celebi is a bigger threat. I don't know why I didn't do that. Like I said, I just missed it. Plain bad. But we have another uh, surround set up right there, but they're going to block it off with the Tapu. Or, yeah, Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele is annoying with this deck because of how many stars they get. But look at that. Max Revive. Well, I mean, I KO'd it, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. But uh, we are going to take this opportunity. We're going to Maelstrom Moon... Moon Rays? Menacing? Moon Rays? Maelstrom. Keep forgetting that. And we're going to get rid of the... Um, the Curlia. Now they're going to attack me, and they get the Teleport Beam, the Plus Star, because of the top of Lele. And now I do have a Confused Dawn Wings. And he has evolved Alexander. And he still has the other Twisted Spoon. So what we're going to do here is we are going to Mega Aerodactyl. We're going to get rid of this Tapu Lele because we don't want any additional stars. We want the additional stars because we have the Primal Sphere, right? So we're going to go after this. And he gets the Psy Shock into the uh, the Taunt. So now he plays his Twisted Spoon, and I'm like, oh, great. Now we can move spaces away. So he's going to Twinkle Tackle here. And there's nothing I can do because he does outstar me because Tapu Lele. Because Twinkle Tackle's four star, and because it's Lele, he gets the additional star. Not that I could have done there, but I do go to the bench, and we're just going to come back with the Aerodactyl. Can't remember what I do here. Move over my Aerodactyl, threaten the surround on the Curler. We're going to attack here because we do get the buff, and I did not realize because I was Mega that could have been bad. I totally forgot about that. But now that we de off from the Mega. He's going to attack into this, and because we are confused, he does get the Psy Shock, and he gets the KO. But what we're going to do is we're going to surround the Curlia, and we're going to threaten game. So opponent is forced to cover up, and then what I decided to do here, they don't have a scoop up or a max revive, so we're going to air balloon right here, threaten game. And my opponent backtracks with the top of Lily, and he attacks here, and we do get the Ice Beam into... Uh, they're white. So here I have options, all right? This was my option. My Z gauge was up. And I thought about it. I was like, all right. So if I Z move this Tapu Lele, the Celebi can just come and replace it. And if we get and if we get rid of the Tapu Lele, they're going to have the... Uh, well, actually, no, they wouldn't be able to get anything on the board because they already long throw. But what I decided to do here, I was like, you know what? It's better if we attack, because if we attack, there is that slight chance that we can get the sky drop. So that's exactly, I swear my Z gauge is right. I'm pretty sure my Z gauge is up there, but we attack and we do get the sky drop. This thing gains weight. We hop over and we get the surround on the Alakazam deck. Or get out of here. GG boys to Havo. I'm pretty sure my Z gauge was up. Like when I attacked there, because I had the option to Z move and I was like, do I Z move or do I just attack? What should I do here? And we attacked and we got it. But all right, let's jump into the last and final match. All right, we are back in this match. We are going to call it 
the Psychic Z move cheese. That's what we're going to call it. So take a look at my opponent. Pretty meta figures. They are also rocking a coward. They're going up against D. Martin. And I have like, there's a lot of options here with this deck. Like I want to get rid of this ability. I want to get rid of this ability. I want to get rid of this ability. So I have three figures that I'm like, okay, those three figures we want to get rid of, but it's going to be slim pickings. Like we kind of have to just base it off of what is going to, uh, what Necrozma is going to counter. So we go first, we're going to play the Primal Sphere. They're going to bring up their Rhyperion. I'm like, okay, that's fine. We can bring up our Dactyl. And then we just set up the Shuppet Wall here. Bring on this uh, Kadabra. And I'm like, all right, perfect. Kadabra, your ability is going to be gone. I wanted him to play the Twisted Spoon, but I didn't... I didn't want to waste an opportunity. I didn't want, like, the Celebi coming in and attacking me because that could have happened and it would have been bad. So now we're going to do it, and I think that's that's where I learned. Like, I could have moved here, and I thought about it after. I was like, oh, dude, I should have moved up there because in the following turn I could have went right here and threatened the game, but we didn't do that. So he's going to bring up the Celebi. We're going to bring over. I don't want to go anywhere near this thing, so I want to do get an evolution off with my uh, Amara. But I'm not going to go here because of the Celebi. And then my opponent, D. Martin, what they're going to do is... I didn't know what I wanted to do here. And now he makes a great play. He's going to uh, blade form. He's going to attack me to get rid of my ability, my gold. Like negating the gold into white ability. And because he did that, uh, it puts me in a difficult situation. So I'm like, all right. What we're actually going to do is we're going to Ultra Burst here to try and get rid of this. We don't have to worry about this because um, we got rid of its ability. So we attack it. <coughs> And we get a clutch photon geyser. Now this thing cannot change black, change back into its shield form. So he's going to advance up here with his Kadabra, and we're going to straight attack into it because we have decent odds. But he gets annihilate, and I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is very bad. And he's going to attack here, but we get a clutch supersonic. Thank you, Vibrava. Thank you, Vibrava. We can now tectonic rage, and we can get rid of the. Uh, Ab or the Kadabra. I almost said Abra Kadabra. I like almost said the full Abra Kadabra Alphazin. I don't know why. But we did get rid of the Kadabra. And now they're going to advance up with the Celebi. I agree with the play. However, there is a slight chance that this could happen. Let's go. Hit and roll. Get out of here, Celebi. So now we're going to advance up. I know I'm going to de evolve <coughs> the following turn. And what I'm trying to do here is. Oh, dude, I forgot. The, the Continental, Continental Crash. I've been running into this quite often, and it is very, like, it definitely messes me up. That 9 weight is so detrimental, especially, like, on my MVP, my like, my most valuable player. So we are going to move forward, and we are going to attack, and what sucks is because my Lunala is in the ultra space, he gets to bring it back. I mean, we do get a surround, but now my primal sphere is negated. We do get the evolution, but I would have rather not, so I shouldn't have attacked there. So now they're going to pull the switch and because something came out of the PC, and now his, he has his ability back. And things are not looking good for me. Look how I'm a sitting duck now. Like before that um, Aegislash was a sitting duck with zero MP, now I'm a sitting duck here. Now what he can do is he can come on, use its ability, and attack here. And I'm like, dude, this is bad. I've got two miles of weight. And he gets a roll, and I'm like, well, okay, we're not going to, we're definitely going to take the L. We don't want to de evolve here. I believe he plays the... Does he play the spoon here? Yeah, he plays the spoon, and I'm like, okay, th this is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to happen. So now he moves forward. He's going to attack my Dactyl. I'm like, Dactyl, please, sky drop, sky drop, sky drop. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take the white on white. Just waiting for my Z gauge to come up. I'm going to max revive here, and I'm like, we have to survive this roll. Please just survive this. Please, just please, 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 please. Let's go. Let's go. We, get, we survive the roll. And he's going to... Wait a minute. Oh, he hit Annihilate. Yeah, he hit Annihilate. So now my opponent is going to attack me, and I don't necessarily agree with... Well, actually, that wasn't that bad of a play. But we're going to take this opportunity because our Z-Gage is up. We are going to the Psychic Z-Move, and we're going to go straight after the Shield form. And boom, GG, boys, let's go. We get this around with the Psychic Move cheese. This was actually not a bad play because had he gotten the, the King Shield, I would have had gain weight too. Had he gotten the Gold, you guys would have known. Actually, I would have... Uh, yeah, I kind of de-evolved there. But, yeah, that's <laughs> we're going to cut the video there. Again, please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the new notice that we just got regarding the ticketing system that we're going to be getting for our boost. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, as always.
Peace.